Hey bro, come let's go for lunch man, where do you want to go? What? Hey bro, let's go for lunch, huh? Make me wait one hour, no sorry, is it? Huh? Okay, okay, no, relax, relax. No, no. No, no, no. There was a jam, okay? Okay, not just one jam, but three jams. Mm -hmm. And then I got to go to the bank, you know, to take money. No money, how to eat. And hey, to get here, I need petrol, man. So I need to pump petrol. Whatever, oh, you and your excuses, I tell you, huh? it's just never ending. No, one day is like this, one day is like that. No, this is, this, I mean, it's true, man, it's true. <laughs> now, that is an argument. Something I'm sure we all had. But the thing is this, it is seldom logical, unlike mathematical reasoning. That is why I love maths. <laughs> mathematical reasoning involves making sense of statements of a mathematical context. Using quantifiers like all or some, we come up with implications and then make arguments. An argument is a process of making a conclusion based on given statements called premises. And remember, it is all logical. Let's examine these premises. Premise 1. All triangles have total internal angles of 180 degrees. Premise 2. PQR is a triangle. So, the conclusion that we can safely draw is that PQR has total internal angles of 180 degrees. So this is one form of argument, which is the classic case of if all A are B and C is A, therefore C is also B. Another example is this. Let's look at this in reverse. Starting with, the conclusion is that 40 is a multiple of 4. While premise 1 says that all multiples of 8 are multiples of 4. Now, what is premise 2? Using the same argument as before, this would mean 40 is a multiple of 8. Okay, moving on to arguments with implication. Given P and Q are two statements, therefore, if P then Q is an implication. This is another form of argument where under implications, if P is true, then Q is true. For example, if K is a factor of 50, then K is a factor of 100. So let's take a look at this argument. Premise 1. If a polygon is a right angle triangle, then one of its internal angles must be 90 degrees. Premise 2. Polygon C is a right angle triangle. Since we know that polygon C is a right angle triangle, satisfying P, then the implication is Q. Therefore, one of the internal angles of polygon C must be 90 degrees. So now we know that if P is true, then Q is true. Using the same reasoning, Another argument is, if not Q is true, then not P is true. So let's take a look at this example. Premise 1. If X equals 8, then X is a multiple of 4. Premise 2. X is not a multiple of 4. So let's look at P and Q. Then look at the second premise. Since not Q is true, then not P is true. Therefore, X is not 8. So let's have a quick recap of the three forms of argument. Argument 1. If all A are B and C is A, then C is also B. Argument 2. If P then Q, if P is true, then Q must be true. Argument 3. If P then Q, if not Q is true, then not P must be true. I'm Noel Chia, and I'll see you in the next episode of SPM Top Tutor Mathematics. <laughs>